So we're now using Internet Explorer and we're going to use Windows Live Image Search to find an image of a clock face. Um, live Image Search presents its results in a quite easy to use way. So if I just put in clock face here and search, I'll then get uh, some results back. And uh, it presents them nicely in that you can just sort of scroll down and see them in a kind of never-ending list. Now, many of these will be will be fine to use, um, so I just need to pick one. And let's say uh, this one looks okay, so let's uh, let's pick that one and click the image URL and just right-click it and choose copy. And then I'll go back into Paint Shop Pro and uh, I can then paste it and I'm going to edit and uh, paste it as a new layer. So that then appears and I need to, to resize it a bit to make it uh, work with our image. Now as I resize it it's hiding the image so what we need to do is look at this layer and just reduce the opacity so it becomes semi-transparent. When we do that it means we can then see through uh, to our layer. So I'm going to just continue to drag it out somewhat and I can um, center it a bit and I'm going to drag it a bit bigger uh, and do a little bit of alignment until it fits our clock face pretty well uh, and that's not too bad actually so you can now see where the numbers need to go and if I move this layer behind our, our numbers layer so our numbers appear on top I can now start to position these in a somewhat more accurate way. So if I uh, if I select the number 12 and then I can just sort of move it down so it fits exactly over that number 12. Similarly for the number 1. I now know, and if I switch that image off for a second, I can see the alignment's working pretty well. And again I can uh, I can copy that image and paste it as a new vector selection and put it here right click and oops right click and uh, change it to the number two and that make sure that's well aligned and so on so I'm going to do the rest of these rather than make you watch me do them and then we'll pick up the video I'm going to pause it for a second okay so I've filled them all in now by hand and you can see they line up nicely so if I switch that background off uh, we just get our clock and it looks pretty good which means I've now finished with this image and I can right click and delete it and yes I do want to delete it and it's gone and all we're left with is the image that we've created so far and we're not using someone else's image but it has been really useful just to get it nicely lined up so that's looking uh, that's looking pretty good for our clock face it's pretty simple but it um, I think it does the trick so what we need to do now is save it away uh, in a format that can be used by um, Second Life so if I choose file and save as currently it's asking me uh, or suggesting that I save it as a paint as a paint shop pro image which is actually worth doing initially even though Second Life can't read paint shop pro image files because it'll con it'll maintain the structure that you see here which makes it easier to change later if you decide you want to tweak it so let's just call it clock face and save it and then we can do the same again and this time we'll save it in a format that um, Second Life can use. Now it can use um, a number of formats actually. The one I, I use almost all the time is a it's a TGA file uh, and you'll see why later when we do the hands why it's important to use TGA. You can just use a bitmap though it'll work fine. Um, but for the time being I'm going to use this TrueVision Targa format which is a format that um, Second Life can read and save it away. It warns me that um, I'll lose this structure here that uh, I, I said we wanted to keep, um, which is why we saved it as a, as a paint shop profile. But as we got that file saved away, we can now say, well, in this case, it's fine for us to lose that structure. So it's saved. And now all we need to do is go into Second Life and import it.